Hey everyone, it's Andrew again. Um, so this is the third video in my series on building a shop with Next.js and Stripe. Uh, in this video, we are going to display the products that we put onto Stripe and the images, etc., description, all that kind of information. We're going to display that in our site. Okay. So let's have a look at the content of this article. So this is what I wrote up. Uh, it'll soon have the video, of course, this one we're talking about right now. Um, but at this point, let's just have a look what we need to do. Okay, so we need to get those products from Stripe, don't we? So they are only accessible via the API and they are only able to be accessed via our secret Stripe key. So we have to wrap the API that makes that call and thankfully, Next.js allows us to have a API uh, with our app, which means we can hide our secret key and have our own API on the local site there, retrieve those products. Now to get started with that, uh, saying that we can add a new product JS, I'm gonna just run the npm for this first so that it's gonna install the package that we need. Jump to my editor here. And let's find the terminal window. Okay, install that. Okay, so it's installed the Stripe package there. And I'm just going to stop my running dev, like so. Start that up again. And away we go. Okay. So we needed to add a product under the API path there. So we've got pages. So all the routing for Next.js happens under that. And then if we want to have uh, backend requests there, we can put them under this API folder. And from the API folder, any requests we make will mean that we take them from that path. Okay, so that will return some JSON for us shortly. So let's let's get that going. So if you look back at the example here, uh, we're going to make this new file called products.js. Now I believe there's one already by default. Uh, it's just the hello one there. Um, I'm just actually I'm just going to re rename it because why not? Okay. So now when I make a request to our site which will be on like so uh, localhost 3000 forward slash api forward slash product we should get the what would be normally the product like so okay so that's now returning uh, some json to us uh, this is from a plugin i've got to install in chrome now and it's showing that the value is just the name and john doe there so that was the, the default that's being set up for us from the Next.js configuration. Let's go back to our product site here. Okay, cool. We're gonna add the following to the product.js file. Okay, so let's just walk through what we're doing. Uh, so we have here the call to the Stripe library, so we can make the request to it. Uh, we have the exports default async function here. So this is our handler for being able to handle a get request from the uh, forward slash API products URL. And you can see here we've got the, we're using the Stripe uh, library here to return products from a list. And that will return a limit of 100 there which means in our case, we'll just return all the products there. Uh, on success, it's going to return 200 with those products. Otherwise, it's going to return an error message. So let's take that, copy it, go back to our file here for the products.js, paste this in, save that. Okay, let's test that is working. 
Okay, so this is our API products. Now we're returning all those back from uh, Stripe here. So we should see the list here. And I'll try and break that down. So we've got the four objects there. You can see uh, one for each item there. We've got a image. So it's basically replicating what we're getting back here. All right, so let's go keep going. Um, so if we can see that we're getting the products back, just like in the screenshot there. Uh, we also need to create the host URL there as well. I'm going to add that host file record here into our env.local file. So I'm going to do this. This is for, of course, when you're running it locally. I'm going to go to my env file and add it in here. Okay, so we've done that. Next step. Okay, so we need to update the file and the index and the pages directory at the following outlined in the orange comments there. So what this will do is this will allow us to pull in all the products from our local API via a server-side render. Okay, and that's a really important thing that we want to do. And the reason we want to do that is we want it to be uh, accessible from search engines, don't we? Because we want our products to be searched for and listed. And if we just did that via a standard uh, Re React sort of uh, based app, that only renders in the JavaScript. And there's potential there that it won't be easily indexed by search engines. So we want to make sure that that is the case. Um, and that's why we're going to do a server side render. And it's why we're going to use get server side props here. Okay, so let's go back to our index page. Okay, so let's grab that content which is highlighted there with the comments. Okay, so we're going to need this section here first, which is the get server side props here. Paste that below in our index.js. Uh, we need to replace the home section there because we're actually passing through the products. So let's do that. And let's change the section here where we've got the products component needs to be added to our page. There we go. Okay, so products.js is going to be our component. Um, what I'll do is copy that first and we'll, we'll walk through each line in here. Okay, copy that and paste. Okay, so this is our component that we're going to put into the home page. And in it, we have the products being passed to it. So that's what we were passing into the home page. So we'll continue passing that products information down to this component. This component will check to see that there is a length on the products that have been passed to it so that we are actually getting some products back. Uh, we need to then iterate over those products. So it's this line here where it's going to map over them. And we're going to use the ID that's coming back from a Stripe for the key there. And importantly, I'm going to actually make it a, a form here rather than sort of passing JSON and posting. So theoretically, this should work without JavaScript. We should be able to still have a form post here to be able to add this item to Stripe. Secondly, a uh, really important thing, we're importing the image component from Next, this one here. Uh, so this image component is really great at returning all the sort of responsive size 
images that we want for our product. Um, it's going to handle the fact if it's you know on a mobile screen, then it will serve up the appropriate size, desktop, tablet, etc. And that's the great reason why we use sort of open source software. It'll tell you we can take advantage of things like this, where we don't have to do all the hard work of using the picture uh, HTML element and having fallbacks, etc. This will generate those images for us. Okay, so I've got the um, products here, like so. We've got the description, name, etc. We've got a button here that's a, of a type of submit, so that when we submit the form, then it will take that to there. And we've also got, most importantly, a hidden ID of the price, price ID here. So this will allow us to be able to purchase that product when we post that form. Uh, and we've just got a catch-all here of uh, no products. Okay, so we've pasted this in. We should be all good to go there. We're probably missing a style. Let's see, just looking at the instructions. Yeah, we are. So we need to create this file and paste it into the styles.js styles folder. Add that there, okay, and grab this, place that into our products module, and now we should be able to get the CSS styling at least working. And there's one more step we need here before we can get these products to display, is we need to add this next config. Okay, so these images are not hosted locally on our site. They are coming from Stripe. We uploaded the images and they are returned via this subdomain here at files.stripe.com. Now for our image component to be able to grab those images, we need to actually tell Next that it's okay to do that um, and actually set a the allowed domains. We can actually do that. So in our app, we will have a next config, okay? And we can grab that, paste that in. There may be some other items in here, uh, slightly different to what I had previously, but that should be the same. Okay, so this can allow us those images, domains, files.stripe.com. We should be able to display our products like so. So, because we uh, we're getting the service, the products server side, we should be able to save our JavaScript here and ensure that we are getting the items uh, server side. So under the dev tools here, just gonna find it, disable JavaScript. Okay. So that's disabled now. Should get the page to load. It's not pretty. Uh, we're not getting our styling uh, running, but at least we get our information all coming through uh, without the JavaScript. Okay. All right, so in the next video, we are going to go over how we can set up the checkout so that we can actually purchase these items on the Stripe hosted checkout page.